Good morning, children. Welcome back to another session of Chemistry Class Six. I am your subject teacher, Ms. Shonali Banerjee, and we will be dealing with the same chapter, that is Chapter One, Introduction to Chemistry, and this one is Part Three. So let us start. First of all, we will have a recap of all that we studied in the previous lesson, that is in Part Two, and then we'll continue with the Part Three session. Okay? So let's start. So children, what did we study in the previous chapter or a previous lesson? We studied first of all the meaning of chemistry and what we uh, learned about the that what is chemistry all about? That it deals it is a branch of science that we are uh, we know. Now what it deals with? It is it deals with the study of the behavior and composition of matter. Okay. We also uh, talked about the chemist means the persons who deal with chemistry or an expert in chemistry is known as a chemist. A chemist is a scientist studying, developing, studying and developing different forms of matter and material. I told you what is matter. Remember, matter is what it any substance, anything which occupies space and has mass. Okay. Okay. So all which you see around is actually matter. Now uh, we were also dealing with uh, uh, different apparatus of uh, chemistry. We previously, before that, we discussed what is chemistry laboratory. So, what are chemistry laboratory? All the chemical experiments uh, uh, which are performed or conducted, okay, in a particular place, in a particular place where all the chemicals and different kinds of apparatus are present, and that place is known as chemical or chemistry laboratory. So, we have one in the school also. I told you that. Now, some of the chemistry apparatus, very common ones, which uh, we generally use. I also gave a picture of that, and we studied about those. We discussed about the test tubes. Okay, the test tube rack in which the test tube is kept. We talked about the Bunsen burner, in which the uh, chemicals which are required to be heated, they are there. The stands, the tripod stand, the flask. About the conical and the round bottom flask, I told you about beakers and all these things, funnels and all. I told you the last uh, in the last video lesson, isn't it? So, uh, this was all about this uh, very preliminary uh, description of what we uh, know about chemistry. Now, we also uh, studied about alchemy. You remember what we studied about alchemy and who were alchemists? Alchemy was actually a semi-esoteric practice. I told you the meaning of semi-esoteric. Semi-esoteric means it was liked by few people. Not everyone was very interested in dealing with all those things. So, few people, it was a semi-esoteric practice where uh, what was the ultimate goal of this alchemy? That to convert the base metals into uh, this uh, gold, okay, using the philosopher's stone. And what alchemists uh, did, it, they did the same task, that is, they were uh, very eager or they always used to try to convert base metals. Base metals, I told you about lead, mercury, tin, all, all these and copper also. So, these are all base metals, means they are ordinary met metals, they are uh, of not very uh, high value. So, these metals were converted into, uh, I mean, they tried to convert those base metals into gold. Uh, what they used uh, uh, for converting that, that was philosopher's stone. I also showed you the philosopher's stone, a bright red colored stone, which uh, I also was, uh, I told you that it was also shown in the Harry Potter's uh, uh, and a sorcerer's stone, the part one of Harry Potter's movies and the book you have seen. Now, mm, this was all about philosopher's stone. Now, uh, this philosopher's stone was believed to uh, discover an elixir of life. Now, what do you mean by elixir of life, I told you? A chemical which would enable people to live longer, okay? Means a kind of, uh, in Hindi or in this one we call Amrit, which increase the lifespan of a person to increase uh, or to cure all their diseases and let them live longer, okay? And uh, we also dealt with some of the contribution of different uh, scientists, famous scientists like Joseph Brisley, who discovered oxygen. We also talked about John Dalton, who put forward the atomic theory. Uh, Edward Jenner, who invented these vaccines against uh, smallpox. Mm, uh, Lewis, who discovered the pasteurization process and vaccine against rabies, also he discovered. We also dealt about uh, this uh, uh, noble, Alfred uh, Bernhard Nobel, who uh, invented dynamite, which is a explosive. Mandelev, who discovered the periodic table. I showed you the diagram of periodic table, how it looks like. All the elements uh, of chemistry are arranged in tabular column. Okay. 
which you will learn in the higher classes. Now, you read about Marie Curie. Okay, Marie Curie, what she did? She isolated radium and polonium. Isolated means separate, okay, to find out separately. Alexander Fleming is discovered penicillin. Penicillin, which is an antibiotic, okay. So, we discussed about all these things in the earlier video lesson. Now, we will start children with the today's lesson and we will go to the next slide. Now, today we will deal mainly with food and chemistry means how is chemistry and food related that we will learn in today's lesson. Okay. Now, uh, food uh, means about nearly 50 years ago, you can uh, consult your books also if you want. About 50 years ago, what was India all about? India had a population of less now, uh, nearly 40 crores it had. But now we, and uh, that time uh, producing 4.5 to 5, pro, uh, 5 crores tons of food grain was enough to meet the needs of the growing population. But now we have a population of nearly 130 crores, okay. Now that uh, 5 crore uh, ton of food which was produced that time will not, not be uh, sufficient to... Uh, meet the hunger needs of all the people who are now here. So, naturally it has to be increased. So, now we nearly produce 24 to 25 tons of food grains. Okay. Now, uh, how this increase was there, tremendous increase of food grain production was there. And this increase was nearly from 1960s to 1980s. This increase of uh, fruit production was, food production was in this period of time. That is from 1960 to 1980. Now, how this uh, extra uh, need of food was met or how this extra food was produced. Okay, So, what were the main factors that led to the increased production of food grains? So, what were they? First of all, use of improved seeds or crops developed by plant breeding. Now, what do you mean by plant breeding children? Now, plant breeding is what? For example, the scientists have seen that uh, Two varieties of crops are very good, they have very good quality, like they are resistant to uh, pests, okay. They are not affected by, pest means insects, okay. They are not affected by uh, insects and also one of the variety has very uh, good yield, means they are uh, producing too much, a lot of crops in one season. So, what they do, they uh, use these two plants to give rise to more plants. So, that is called plant breeding and plant breeding is done artificially, okay. So, use of improved seeds. So how this improved seeds will be coming? When the good quality crops produce seeds, okay, there will be improved seeds which come into the scene. And these improved seeds, where, seeds where, when they are uh, sowed, it will lead to uh, good uh, means uh, yield of crops. So, like this, the uh, yield of crops was increased. Now, next point is improvement in soil fertility by using fertilizers. Now, you know that always the soil of every region is not good in uh, all the components which a plant requires. Plant also as we require different chemical uh, chemicals which are synthesized in our own body uh, for growth. Similarly, plants also require potassium, calcium, all these elements to grow. Okay. Now, all the soils not have that. So, fertilizers are to be put from outside which incre increased the soil fertility. That's why this, the soil became more good and uh, the, uh, soil, uh, the crops which uh, were grown in those soil were uh, used to give more amount of crop. That is the yield was very high. So, fertilizers again is a part of chemistry. Now, protection of plants from pests by using pesticides. Now, these pesticides, pesticides are what? Pests means insects and sides means to kill. To kill the insects which attack the plants is on the pesticides okay so now if for example good quality crops are being produced but there are different pests around different insects around who are destroying the crops naturally the yield will go low the yield will be very less so what will what is done these pesticides were created by chemistry uh, these chemists to uh, kill these pests so that the plants are protected okay Control of plant diseases. Some of the diseases uh, resulted in the plants due to deficiency of some uh, chemicals or something. So, they were externally given by these uh, or uh, some med uh, means uh, fertilizers or some uh, uh, pesticides or some weedicides. Some chemicals or were sprayed, sp uh, sprayed on into the plant so that the plants uh, were free from these diseases, okay. Some virus or bacteria sometimes may attack, okay, the plants and they were sprayed, sprayed with these fungi fungicides uh, to uh, reduce them. Now, I will tell you what is uh, all about fungicides. We have that. 
now fungicides i told you fungus uh, i don't know you remember in biology or not fungus i told you fungus means during the rainy season you might have seen that molds grow on the surface of the leather bags you will see a, a powdery uh, thing growing or on the bread if the bread is kept for too long outside you will see some greenish colored things grow on the uh, surface of the bread they are all molds they are all fungi okay these fungi are actually organisms okay i'll uh, means they are they need also to be to be killed and they cause many diseases so uh, these uh, plant diseases were also controlled by this manner with the help of chemicals now by using high yielding variety uh, varieties now what is high yielding varieties high yielding varieties means which will give more crops okay so they are known as high yielding varieties or hyvs okay not hiv high hiv is different it is a causative organism of ales it is h i it is hyv here okay high yielding varieties that is the full form you should remember now natural fixation of nitrogen uh, by electric discharge during lightning now uh, first of all see children that all the last three points are related to fixation of nitrogen okay now what do you first know or what do you mean by fixation of nitrogen you, you should first know fixation of nitrogen is a process by where atmospheric nitrogen you know that our atmosphere has nearly 78 percent of nitrogen 78 to 80 okay percent of nitrogen now this amount of nitrogen is present in the air but this cannot by cannot be utilized by animals and plants which is there okay so this nitrogen from the air is fixed by different methods fixed means it is kept means uh, brought into the soil so that uh, plants can can utilize it uh, it is made available to the soil so that plants can because air if the nitrogen is present soil will not be able to absorb that okay so somehow or some processes are there by which this nitrogen in the atmosphere is uh, converted or made available to the soil so that plants can utilize it and if plants are utilize it uh, if plants utilize it naturally animals will be eating the plants and uh, humans also eat plants and also animals so that nitrogen will be circulating okay so this is actually called fixation of nitrogen that is taking or uh, fixing the atmospheric nitrogen so that we can use it the plants and the animals can use it okay to fix it in the soil to make it available in the soil now natural fixation of nitrogen in this point by electric discharge during lightning now what happens during lightning the mm, atmosphere has uh, nitrogen as well as oxygen now this uh, nitrogen is very stable compound okay it is a very stable one so it is it is very hard to break it so what happens when lightning uh, occurs this uh, this uh, very stable or this very um, rigid structure of nitrogen breaks and it combines with oxygen and it may it is made available into the soil okay in the form of uh, no2 i will come to know about when you go to the higher classes all these things now what you uh, should know that the nitrogen which is in the air is made available to the soil with the help of electric discharge or lightning okay the next one is fixation of atmospheric nitrogen by symbiotic bacteria now fixation of nitrogen i have already told you what do you mean by fixation of nitrogen now here you get another term which is symbiotic bacteria what do you mean by symbiotic bacteria symbiotic bacteria are those uh, or symbiotic comes from the word symbiosis okay symbiosis is a process the symbiosis spelling is s y m b i o s i s symbiosis now what does this symbiosis mean it is a relationship what kind of relationship it is a relationship between two organisms whereby each one of the two organisms are benefiting each other okay for example uh, if i consider a uh, human example for example um, in my house i am allowing uh, somebody to live okay as rent as rent uh, that uh, person uh, is living okay uh, now or uh, uh, i allow a person to live in my house i uh, without any rent i allow the person to live in my house now i am uh, helping that person to live in my house that is uh, i am giving accommodation to that person and that person is cooking for me and feeding me okay he is uh, the person is cooking me and feeding me so each both of us we, we are mutually helping each other i am helping that to live them to live him to live and that person is helping me by cooking and uh, uh, giving me the food okay so 
we are helping each other. This is called symbiosis relationship. Similarly, what happens? There are some leguminous plants. Leguminous plants means beans, pea, all these are legumes. Okay, you know these. Now, these legumes, they have in their roots, there are uh, small, small nodules. Nodules means some small ball kind of pea-shaped pea balls are present in its roots. Whose roots? Leguminous plants like peas, beans, all these plants have these uh, in their roots, they have uh, root nodules, right? Uh, uh, small, small balls are present. Now, what are present in these balls? In these balls are present these rhizobium bacteria, okay? In the leguminous plants, these rhizobium bacteria are present. Where they are present? In the, uh, these uh, root nodules, okay? Now, uh, mm, uh, root nodules, uh, this uh, rhizobium bacteria is uh, present there. Now, what is the, what uh, this leguminous plant, how it helps the rhizobium bacteria by giving it shelter, okay? And how the rhizobium bacteria helps the leguminous plants by fixing atmospheric nitrogen. Means it can capture atmospheric nitrogen and make it available for the plants to use it, okay? That is the meaning of fixation of atmospheric nitrogen by symbiotic bacteria. Now, symbiosis, what I told you, mutual relationship whereby both the organisms are helping each other, okay, in one or the other way. Now, fixation of atmospheric nitrogen by blue-green algae. First of all, blue-green blue -green algae are prokaryotes. You know about prokaryotes. I have dealt about prokaryotes in uh, your biology chapter. Prokaryotes are which organisms? They uh, are, uh, means they do not have a true nucleus. Their uh, genetic material is not bounded by a nuclear membrane, okay. So, this fixation of atmospheric nitrogen by blue-green algae is done by this, uh, the, uh, uh, atmospheric nitrogen is fixed by these blue-green algae. These blue-green algae are also known as cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria the spelling is C-Y-A-N-O-B-A-C-T-E-R-I-A, -E cyanobacteria. Why? They are bluish-green in color. What does, uh, you know in uh, arts and craft you have done this drawing, okay, blue, when you combine this blue and green color, it looks, gives a color called cyan or cyan, okay. So, that's why cyanobacteria because they are blue-green in color, okay. So, fixation of nitrogen is done by blue-green algae, algae also. Now, let us go into the next slide, okay. Now, uh, food from animals, plants and animals are also the major source of our food. The plants and animals are major source of our food. How they are major source of our food? Milk, curd, butter, ghee, khoya, ice cream, kulfi, all are dairy products. That is, all are made from uh, this milk. Uh, that is, they are all dairy products. Now, where this milk come from? Naturally, from cows and buffaloes. So, the high yielding or high milk yielding breeds of cows and buffaloes, dairy cows and buffaloes, are developed which produce nearly 3000 to 3500 liters in case of cows and 1500 that is 1500 to 2000 liters of milk in case of buffaloes re respectively per lactation period. What do you mean by lactation period? Now children, you will read about lactation in higher classes but let me give you a very rough idea. Now lactation is production of milk, okay. Now, this lactation period is that period and uh, uh, mammals uh, can produce milk. Only mammals can produce milk. That's why they, are, they have mammary glands, okay? Uh, that's why they are known as also mammals. Now, these mammals can produce milk only when they give birth to a young one. Now, when cows and buffaloes have given birth to their uh, calf, now what happens? This calf, uh, production of this calf or reproduction uh, helps in production of milk in their mammary glands, okay? So, this is called lactation period. No, now, lactation period does not occur every time. Only when the uh, organism or the mammal is giving birth to a young one, only that time the lactation period or the milk producing period, lactation milk, milk producing, milk producing period starts, okay? So, this high yielding variety or uh, breeds of cows and buffaloes are developed with the help of this which produce um, food. Again, milk, as you know, produces different types of food for us and is thus helpful for us. Let us go into the next slide. Now we come to food preservation. What do you mean by preservation first you need to understand children. Now you know that there are different types of food which generally get spoiled very easily. They are perishable. What do you mean by perishable? They get spoiled very easily. They get rotten very easily. Okay. We cannot eat them after some days. Now the process by which spoilage of perishable foods is preserved by certain methods. 
Now, whenever certain methods are used to preserve food, perishable food, perishable means which tend to destroy or perish, means get rotten very easily or get stale very easily. How to preserve them? That is all about preservation. Now, the common uh, methods which are used for food preservation are by cooling. You know that whenever your mother cooks something or your father brings something uh, from the market and it, uh, if it tends to uh, get rotten very easily, what your mother does? It, she puts it in the refrigerator. Now, how this uh, keeping it in the refrigerator, you know that refrigerator is much more cooler than the outside temperature. So, how this uh, uh, cooling helps or preserves the food, okay? Now, cooked and fresh uh, cooked food can be preserved, means cooked as well as fresh food, okay? Freshly cooked food, it can be preserved, means it can be kept in a proper way by keeping them at a low temperature. Low temperature means in a refrigerator or in a deep freezer. So, what it do does, the low temperature prevents the spoilage of food. Why this low temperature prevents the spoilage of food? Because it, because it retards the growth of bacteria. Retard means slows down, slows down the growth of bacteria inactivates the enzymes present in the food. Now listen, what happens that these bacteria actually they also have enzymes. I have explained about enzymes in your biology classes. What do you mean by enzymes? Enzymes means those chemicals which are produced by the cells, any cells like bacteria, viruses or in our cells, these enzymes help in uh, fastening the chemical reactions which are taking place in our body. All the metabolic activities which are taking place in our body are fa uh, means, uh, produce, means are done very fast because of these enzymes. These enzymes are actually proteins. Okay. Now, what happens when these back, when for example, your mother has cooked something. Okay. Now, it was kept out, outside. It might happen that by chance some spores or some bacteria might have fallen there. Okay. You cannot see bacteria. They are microscopic in structure. Now, when these, this food is put inside the fridge, what will happen? That bacteria will not be able to multiply itself, okay? Why? Because the enzymes, when it is put in cool, uh, I mean, cool places, it does not uh, means, uh, work, that uh, those enzymes do not work and hence the bacteria cannot multiply itself and that's why the food is preserved by that process, okay? By pasteurization. What do you mean by pasteurization? And this method, as you know, we discussed earlier in the contributions of different scientists that pasteurization process was just developed by Louis Pasteur, okay? And he did it by preserving milk. He heated the milk up to 60 degrees centigrade and then he suddenly cooled it. Okay, that is called pasteurization. And uh, this killed most of the bacteria which was there in the milk. Now, by heating and by canning. Now, what do you mean by heating and canning? Now, heating food at 110 degrees centigrade for about 30 minutes and then canned under vacuum. Now, what is heating? Heating, you know that whenever food is heated, all the bacteria and spores which are present there, generally they die. And after heating, when all these things are dead, what is done? This canning is done. Now, what is canning all about? Canning means in a particular container, it is sealed and kept inside. Now, sealed means what? There has to be no air. That's why in your book, it is written under vacuum. Vacuum means what? without any air because you know that air only contains the spores or any bacteria or viruses so the food might get spoiled that's why canning is done canning means it is canned without any air inside with that is under vacuum now the last one last point is by using chemical preservatives now some of the chemical preservatives which are used that is this method is actually called uh, chemical preservation okay what is uh, these uh, what are the chemical preservatives which are generally used questions might be asked okay name two chemical preservatives it is sodium benzoate and potassium metabisulfite so these two chemical preservatives are generally used to preserve food if these chemicals are mixed with the food generally bacteria and all these uh, 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 spores generally don't attack the food and cannot spoil the food okay so children will now see how chemistry is helpful in food production now how this chemistry uh, is helpful uh, in this food industry and food production process now See, first of all, fertilizers that, uh, the, that increases the soil fertility as well as insecticides, pesticides, fungicides and weedicides. I'll explain. I'll explain what are they. For fertilizers, you know, I told you, insecticides. Naturally, they will kill, kill insects. Pesticides are the same. Small pests uh, or insects are also killed by uh, these pesticides and insecticides. Fungicides. Fungicides are uh, which chemicals? They, are, they will kill the fungi. I told you about fungi. They are spores which generally grow in the rainy season on the bread, on the leather items and all these things. So, they kill the 
fungi that's why fungi sites weedy sites weedy sites is a new term again weedy sites means those you will see that uh, when you grow some flowering plants or any other crops uh, in your field or in your garden then what happens near those crops you will see some other plants also are growing along with the uh, crops which you have sown okay now these are weeds they are not useful to us but they somehow grow in the area so to kill these weedy sites some chemicals are also so, also there so these fertilizers as well as these uh, insecticides pesticides fungicides and weedy sites are again all chemicals so ultimately help in full pro food production okay by increasing the yield now next synthetic plant hormones and growth regulators now children whenever you hear the word synthetic synthetic means artificial whenever there is intervention or there is something which is done by human beings okay it is called artificial or man made or synthetic now plant hormones are naturally there in the plants okay there are some hormones now i told you about hormones also in the biology uh, classes that hormones are chemical messengers okay hormones are chemical messengers messengers are who who take information from one place to another and they are chemicals that's why they are known as hormone means uh, chemical messengers they are in the form of chemicals in our body in plants body there are many hormones so plant hormones are naturally present in their body or in their uh, the plant body but some man made or artificial or synthetic hormones are produced to enhance their growth and there is growth regulators to uh, increase their growth so that they grow very fast okay so these are artificially also produced by this with the help of this chemistry okay now better methods of food storage and preservation now uh, we saw just now that uh, different uh, chemical preservatives are used for uh, storing food like uh, sodium benzoate and potassium metabisulfite now these are again what chemicals so again the use of chemistry comes here again okay in food now comes synthetic foods now what are synthetic foods naturally which are produced by man naturally natural foods are what natural foods means which are uh, which occur naturally in the plant for example the fruits which you see they are naturally occurring but synthetic food synthetic food like bread bread is not uh, uh, directly produced by the plant isn't it we process it by uh, with the help of this uh, uh, white flour okay flour we uh, flour means not flour okay it is flour f l o u r flour okay white flour that is uh, all purpose flour we use and we make bread from that okay so this is synthetic foods are made with the help of this chemicals which are uh, again uh, this use of chemistry comes into the scene now children this is all about today's lesson okay uh, all the things which i told you in all the things you will go through very nicely listen to the class repeatedly take the help of your book any problems you face keep it noted when the class reopens we'll again deal with it when the school reopens and if any problems are there you might uh, also give a message there that ma'am we have this this problems and children there is no harm in knowing something more okay for example uh, many of my class 6 children wrote that ma'am prokaryotic and eukaryotic we don't have on our number syllabus or in our book you have in your book first of all and there is no harm in knowing something extra because it is always helpful in the long run so children go through the chapter nicely i'll be back with another lesson of chemistry very soon thank you very much for today bye bye